Oh, thank you very much for, for, for this. Thank you, Miguel, for organizing uh, this talk. I'm really happy that I feel that my talk will touch upon others' talks. And it might remind you of Rachel's talk, it might remind you a bit of Alejandro's. So I'm, I'm really happy for that. Um, my name is Jose. You can just call me Jose. That's, I think that's the easiest way. I work at Seamerge. Uh, Seamerge is a cardiac electromechanics research group. We started at King's. Um, we started at King's, but as, as the group has uh, grown, eventually we moved, uh, most of us moved to Imperial. So now we're kind of like trying to take over as many universities as we can. Um, we have past members who are still actively developing and uh, still actively working with us. We have other partners. Uh, we have uh, the groups in Bordeaux, in Graz uh, that help us. And we have a, a plethora of um, clinical fellows and researchers who obviously come to us with questions and we can help them do, um, do their research as well. Uh, my group is mainly a, a computational modeling group. And essentially what we have is a, a lot of our, our focus is on patient-specific cardiac anatomical models. And so that normally would start with an image uh, let's call that a CT that then gets segmented somehow. Then that segmentation needs to go into a meshing process. Uh, for us, we're a cardiac group, so we're very interested in fiber orientation. So we get we need to get those, and then from those uh, we can uh, run computational models that go on to excitation. So that means the electrical activity of the heart and whole heart movement. That means mechanics. No? So that's the E and M from the research groups name, and we can extract things. However, this is mostly the, the main pipeline, and at each step we can grab measurements, get uh, areas, sphericity, those types of things, which might be of interest for a particular task. So uh, why CMRChat? Well, as we've touched on uh, throughout this morning, uh, a lot of the code in research can be a bit difficult to maintain to say, uh, and so for example, we used to have this, this pipeline to take a left atrium and, it's, and segment it from an image and extract fibers uh, from it. And we had a, a standard operating procedure which included uh, opening various different uh, pro programs, each of them with their own appendices. Um, you had to open Paraview, do something, close it, open uh, MATLAB, run a script, close it, open Paraview again, do something with the thing that you just did. And this process was very involved. It was very user dependent. Uh, it lasted around four and a half hours to do a single case, right? So that's just an example of what all of the pipelines that we were working on looked like. And this is, I'm talking to you about eight or so years ago. Um, and so we developed SimmerJap. Well, the group developed SimmerJap. Uh, eventually, I joined the group and, and started developing as well. We're a platform uh, built on top of MITK, which already is a platform built, built on top of a lot, a lot of other open source platforms. And uh, we added our own custom image processing and computer vision toolkits uh, to perform statistical machine learning and simulation approaches, and eventually allow the study of physiology, pathology, and hopefully towards the future informed diagnosis and treatment uh, for our clinical fellows. And in very few terms, because we do work with uh, clinicians, we hope to enable cardiovascular clinical researchers to perform complicated image analysis tasks, but with very limited training and very limited knowledge of what's actually happening in the background. I do have to give a disclaimer that obviously we're still a research tool. We haven't crossed that barrier yet. Uh, however, we're, we're gearing towards that. And so a normal pipeline would look like this. We try to make the, um, the UI very user-friendly. We have numbered steps, so there's no uh, loss. There's color coding to tell researchers that they might be looking at an optional uh, feature or something that they don't need to use. And uh, we have some plugins to, to um, binaries that we have that we ship with the application. And at the moment we're on version 2.2. Um, and so 
what we do, we have a bunch of key features running in the background uh, for image processing that involve registration, segmentation, some machine learning tools that we developed ourselves, uh, mesh man manipulation, some in-house algorithms, for example, um, extracting the, the information on, on fibrosis and native fibrosis or scarring uh, in the atria. And this all can be combined into specific tasks. So a clinician might come with a research question, we develop the pipeline, a set of steps, we use these key features. So for example, uh, we have five main workflows or plugins. Uh, one of them involves motion quantification. We get a CME MRI. We can track the area change of the different uh, regions of, of the ventricle. Uh, we have anatomical and morphological measurements, things like size, thickness, and those sorts of things. We have our uh, scar quantification, which is the plugin that gets the most attention from us. So that's the one that we have most, most developed. It used to be a, a guided step-by-step. -step. We have an option to, to have the fully automated uh, thing. And more recently, and what I'm going to be discussing a bit more in depth, our atrial toolkit, which from the left atrium of the heart, we get um, we input an image, and a few steps later, we get fiber orientations and a fibrosis map. Of, of that particular patient. And it's all remembering that we focus on patient specific. So that means taking an image that was taken from an actual patient and run it through our, our software. Now, how, how do we, well, we're, we're still young. We're, we're not that far ahead. However, we're trying to uh, have sustainable development. And for us, that means five things. So we want the code to be robust. Uh, we want it to be modular, so we, we have a model control view uh, model. Uh, we, we have the infrastructure and we started doing uh, continuous integration and continuous developing development frameworks. Uh, this is very important for us. We try to make it as accessible as possible for our users. Uh, so we've developed a lot of FOTs, a lot of video tutorials. We have a YouTube channel actually. And we've, we're in constant communication with our users. And uh, what I'm going to be focusing on right now is how, how can we make our pipelines reproducible? So going back to the example I, I said before, uh, we had the objective of creating a model suitable for electrophysiological simulations from a patient MRI scan. And we had the, the the, diff the difficult problem before, it, it was very long to, to process a single case, susceptible to user error, it, wasn't, it was not reproducible, and definitely it was not scalable. So we, we came in, uh, we kind of like analyzed and, and, and saw some steps there, and that's what I'm trying to uh, highlight there in the original SOP. And we came with a pipeline, but we can discuss later if, if there's time. Uh, and from this pipeline to, to develop atrial models, uh, we did a reproducibility study in which we took 50 cases, um, five users, we gave 20 cases per user, they would use our application to extract uh, a fibrosis map and fiber orientations for the left atria, and all five users had to do that. Then we uh, develop a, a, a series of comparisons to test interoperator variability, so two people doing the same case or interoperator variability, the same people, the, the same person using doing uh, the same case twice, uh, obviously without them knowing. And we had some reproducibility calculations. Now, I, in the interest of time, I'm just going to jump ahead to telling you the results. So first of all, our pipeline um, reduced the model building time to under 20 minutes, which is which allows for a lot more cases to be done by the same person at the same time. But more, most importantly, with this pipeline, we managed to prove that um, the impact of operator decision uh, was similar to the impact that you would get, for example, from image resolution. So it's within that, that low, low threshold, uh, which is quite, it was quite uh, good, good to know. Um, now the practical, um, uh, implications, we're hoping that this type of framework we can um, 
have, uh, this is for the atrium, but we can go beyond that and do full heart models. We're working on that at the moment. We do, in terms of simulation studies, this was the first, uh, the first one that addressed reproducibility. And we really hope that this can be used as a template going forward. Um, and SimmerJap is fully open source. It runs on standard laptops, which is one of our main selling points, it seems, um, and follows a standard uh, in standardized method methodologies. Uh, almost uh, finally, we do have a, a Twitter account if you want to follow. We don't, we don't always put things about the application, but also about the group in general. We have a, a, a GitHub page. We try to be as engaged with our users as we can. Um, and and just a, a quick take home message. Uh, we do believe that Simmerjap has the potential to um, potential for the development of patient specific computational heart models, facilitating their adoption into, into clinical applications and enable research with larger cohorts. And I hope that the small reproducibility study that we did can it's, it's like a, a way into, into that future. Thank you. I just have one quick one about sure. the, um, the MIT case, uh, I guess, application. And so, how, how, how many people are actually maintaining, you know, like the issues uh, or right. applications? Or let's say you're running one application and and then you just have to with your, you know, your, your speed, I guess, colleague. Or, yeah, mm -hmm. how, many, how many people are maintaining? Right. Okay. So, MIT case from, from 2018. Um, I, I'm telling you because I was the one who ported us into 2018 version, which is the one we're on at the moment. Uh, we don't touch the code from MIT case. So if we find a problem there, so for example, there, there was a big problem with them reading the icons and we collaborated with them to try to get that sorted, but we didn't touch the code, right? We just looked for ways around it. Uh, with, with regards to our code, when it's our problem, uh, we have, at the moment, it's a large team of two, <laughs> including myself. Uh, we, and I think this touches on, on what Rachel was, was discussing earlier. Uh, every so often we, we get an RSC depart our RSC department, so first at King's, now at Imperial and so on, uh, to help us, they give us three months of their time or something like that. And we have a, a, a big backlog of development tasks that no one wants to do. And that's that's how we're trying to kind of like improve improve yeah. our, our and keep the, the code sustainable. So you're welcome. Thank you very much.